Well, hello, this is Linda Carbono from Walking Through Life TV show and Life School 101 with my co-host, Mary Adams. Hi, Mary, how you doing? Awesome, <laughs> how are you? Good, and our guest today is uh, Simon Dennis from the Center of Transformational Practices here in White River Junction. What's the address? 149 Latham Works Lane. Yeah, it's right in back of my house. White River Junction. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Yeah. So, Mary, I thought if it's okay with you, we might talk to Simon a little bit about the mission of the center and what the practices is all about. Um, so, did, would you want to tell us a little bit? Mary might have some questions. We have questions. We can just boom, gotcha. Okay. How's that? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, mission's a good place to start. The center's mission is to advance inner transformation as the foundation for positive social change. So right off the bat, we're at this, in this space, which is both involving personal transformation and personal change, and also societal transformation and social change. So we look at what is the intersection between these two, and we also look at how do they influence one another. And uh, basic, I think the basic uh, overriding principle is that um, we cannot advance our culture to move into a period of being sustainable and greater justice for others without a commensurate shift in our consciousness. Mm -hmm. So of these, of these two things, if you say consciousness shift and societal shift, the sh consciousness shift is a foundation. Yep. So that's the basic understanding that we proceed from. So, uh, but how do people find, I mean, how, if somebody's brand new and they go there and they know what the mission and they're intrigued, they really would like to get into it and find out how you how you go about doing that. Um, do you have classes or events or things like that that people can attend to find out more? Yeah, we sure do. We have, uh, that's part of what we're up to is offering programming to the general public. See? And we have a bunch of great programming coming up, some uh, bigger events and some littler events and uh, all of this be very interesting. I can talk in more detail about that. Uh, I would also recommend people can get onto our newsletter, uh, mm -hmm. find us on Facebook, and there's a portal there where people can sign up to be on our, we send out a newsletter generally once a month or maybe sometimes twice a month yeah. just to tell people about what kinds of events are coming up. And also uh, there'd be some kind of messages or kind of information about the movement and ideas oh. about that's coming along. Yeah, I mean, Mary, when Mary, when I first told Mary about the center and everything, she was so intrigued. What is uh, that you're interested in, Mary, that you would like to ask Simon? Well, Simon, the first thing is I want to thank you for coming on to the show. This is a topic that I am very passionate about. It's very close to home. It's the whole reason uh, I became co-owner and co-founder of Co-Creator Radio Network 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. The power of co-creation and that, that conscious change. And in order to, you know, I hear a lot of people say that they don't like how things are changing right now. And what I say to them is, well, then let's create solutions and let's look within ourselves and find those areas that we're having trouble moving forward mm -hmm. and, and let's create something new. And this is such an important topic and what you do as a center is is just amazing and i um i hope that i get to work with you in the future on different projects because i'm very passionate about uh this particular information so my question to you is this where where is your perspective at the moment on what's happening in our society and what we're seeing in the world? Well, I guess I, uh, well, it's a good, good place to start. It's a good question. Um, I think I start um, primarily from an environmental standpoint. And um, the, my, my basic uh, frame of reference in that regard is linked to carbon parts per million. So we think about emissions in the atmosphere and the way in which we are creating a heating effect on our planet uh, by means of the way that we consume goods very often. And so it comes down to how much we're consuming. Um, so that's one kind of benchmark that I think about like what this, this day and age is. Uh, another part also relating to the environment has to do with the uh, rate of uh, species extinction and the way in which our, our rate of consumption, not just as individuals, but as a planet as a whole, relates with the overall carrying capacity of the planet. And you might know that uh, we've surpassed that carrying capacity um, 
and are, are quickly moving towards a place of being of, of needing two planets to support the people that we have on here. And a lot of this is the responsibility of uh, Western nations that are consuming far more than their fair share. Uh, sometimes you could say five times as much as our fair share. Mm -hmm. Uh, so those two two kind of points of reference. Another one it's, uh, that I think is very very important for this uh, time is an understanding of uh, the emergence, the reemergence, and the growth of white supremacist thought, mm. uh, patriarchal thought, yep. um, and uh, the way in which that has kind of distorting our overall frame of reference um, and uh, uh, limiting the freedoms of people on on every side of that. Um, and uh, of course, that has gotten a lot uh, that's come more into the news of late with the results of the recent presidential election mm -hmm. and, uh, and some of the ideology which has is, which is grown in that regard. Um, and uh, I guess the other frame of reference that I'm very concerned with and very aware of has to do with the, not only the a, uh, exploitative foreign policy, mm -hmm. which is uh, using and uh, manipulating other uh, sovereign nations for our own economic benefit, uh, not only manipulating but also dropping bombs on them um, mm -hmm. in, uh, right now in seven countries throughout the Middle East and also the way in which the mainstream news media is misrepresenting that. Yeah. So these are things, that's, those are comments that I would offer. None of it's you know, uh, uh, all on the sort of a little bit pessimistic side, or you could say a little bit on the negative side with regards to where we are right now as a uh, global community and, and what's going on right now. Um, and in the midst of that, uh, there we are in a period of uh, enormous opportunity, enormous awakening is going on as well. So these different, different trends in human history are all moving in parallel to one another and uh, it's up to us as to which one gets to win the day in the end. Right, but I think if we're, we're all conscious and I think, yeah, I like to think, think of it as we're waking up, we're waking up and knowing that each one of us can do something, can do something, me and Mary talked about, each one of us can do something to contribute to make this world better, you know? Um, and so I'm going to have to say down to your center, you have apple trees, which is absolutely wonderful. Uh, you know, it's like they brought in uh, raspberry bushes downtown. You know, people are needing that, you know, with, with everything going up, you know, and charging outrageous prices for things where, you know, uh, poor people are suffering, you know? I mean, they've cutting back the food stamps, they're cutting back this, but here we go. We got the, the Center for Transformation Practices is providing things for that. All you gotta go down, do is go down and, you know, pick some I and mean, maybe help out. Yeah, yeah in terms of uh, what we can do, how we can all respond in meaningful ways to this, our, our particular historical context at this moment, um, I think about it as kind of on three tiers, is that the first and foremost, there's this notion of uh, my own kind of personal evolution and, and development. Um, mm -hmm. We are, uh, you can think of this in terms of spiritual practice, but you can also think of it just in terms of self-care yep. or in terms of how, how we uh, um, relate with our own well-being and health. Um, as being the primary frontier, the first frontier in terms of what is the, what do we have to offer the world? Exactly. In other words, we're moving into a time where uh, what we do for our most kind of uh, inner transformation is also we need to recognize that as a service to the broader community and a service to the world as a whole. Absolutely. And Simon, I want to say that um, I, I very much agree with what you're saying, and a lot of people out there watching might feel that this is extremely controversial, but in my mind, this is extremely empowering. Yeah. And that's what this show is really about, is that when you come to a level of consciousness where you have the ability to look and see what's really happening, and then take action to do something change about it. it. That's where change is created. And we some and as humans, we forget that sometimes. Um, that's the funny part of us humans is we forget how powerful we are. And so what I want to ask you, uh, so my next question is, how do you see that we can change these things? What's that next step? Oh, well, it's a, 
the next step is really a million next steps, right? There's as many next steps as, uh, as there are people here on the planet uh, in each moment. Uh, I, um, but uh, the, um, when you said we forget how powerful we are, the thought that came to my mind is we also forget how interconnected we are. Yep. Um, and, uh, and I think that that is to some extent the, the, the fundamental, one of the fundamental factors that dictates whether or not uh, we can literally survive as a human race is whether or not we can remember that we are all deeply and intimately interconnected with one another. And it's a bit of a switch of mindset. So for instance, if we have a kind of a modern mindset of kind of individualistic, where we think of ourselves as separate from one another, there is uh, a school of thought that says, well, therefore, we will create uh, social structures, and we will create technology, and we will create po politics that recapitulates that separateness in the form of injustice, in the form of extraction, exploitation, and, and other things that, that hurt ourselves and one another. Whereas, if we can recognize our, the degree to which we are interconnected with one another, we will automatically begin to create a, uh, a world around us by means of our actions that will look out for the, not just the well-being of one another, but we could say also the long-term well-being of one another. Uh, we begin to uh, think in a more with broader horizons with regards to what our responsibilities are to one another and how we can create uh, s sustainability and justice. Uh, so that's where, again, uh, the, the, the next step, okay, so after we come to the, the first step of, of um, dedicating a little bit of time from our own day to step out of the rat race, mm -hmm. to let our thoughts settle and connect with those aspects of ourselves and the world around us that are truly meaningful, mm -hmm. maybe by means of reading something, maybe by means of going out into the natural world and enjoying that environment. I don't know if that's a good answer to your question or not, but that's what comes to mind to say, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't this great, Mary? Boy, he's... Yeah. It, it, it blew me away. My yeah. hair should be flying back. It was so good. I mean, it was just, it was so good. And I, I felt it in every cell of yeah. my body. It's, it's the truth. It's the truth. And I love that beautiful truth that we have an opportunity and that it is that... It's that simple and yet that complex. And what it really takes is it takes people who are willing to change and taking that action. And I know for myself, that's become a very important part of my existence and of how I move in this life is I want the years that I have left to be that, to be that change that I left my thumbprint of change. I know that I did what I could. Hmm. And so, the people in your center, how do you motivate them to be this change? How do you, well, what kind of things do you do there to bring this to that next level? Yeah, okay, well, I, um, in, in, we have a very, um, we, we don't operate with a lot of hierarchy at the center, which is to say that it's not, it's not anyone's job to motivate anyone else. People come into the center with their mm -hmm. own life path and their own commitment to personal and societal transformation. If, if not for that, nobody would want to be at the center to begin with. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so really we look at the center as a place where people who already have that commitment and that desire to uh, have an uh, environment whereby they can express that. But um, uh, there we have a, um, a ongoing abiding commitment to um, work with one another in a meeting environment. Let's say yeah. that we're getting together for house meeting or for dinner um, in a way which is um, uh, allows us all to bring out our speak from the heart and bring out what we have to say. So there's a contemplative approach to meeting practice. Uh, and there's a and there's a contemplative approach to meals. Mm. Um, everyone at the center is, or most everyone at the center is engaged in some kind of daily spiritual practice as well. Uh, and uh, naturally, I do too. So that happens uh, first thing in the morning, if it happens at all. And I think for me, when I first committed myself to be to live a very uh, happy spiritual life, 
I chose uh, meditation. I chose being aware. You know, it's like it was like uh, before my world was dark, dark with mental illness, mm. and then having my first spiritual awakening. I couldn't believe it because I saw these ducks and this little family of ducks. Raised my head a little bit more, and I saw some beautiful flowers. Or never saw a waterfall. You know, it's like where was all this stuff before? And here it is, right in front of me. Nobody can tell me I didn't have a spiritual awakening, and it's there all the time. Linda, are you are you referring to a particular uh, experience that you had? Yeah, yeah. How amazing! Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm trying to think. 2005. It was probably about a year before he started this year. Wow. But it was it was because Mary. I, I don't know if I've told you, but when you when I was lost in my mental illness, a lot of it was, you know, ne- very negative in. I call it dark because it was so negative and I couldn't see anything good in the world or in myself. So then when you, when I all of a sudden saw that and my feeling at the moment was, you know, I really want to be helpful to other people, but I don't know how to do it because I'm just stuck in this, you know, and then allowing myself to let go of all that darkness and and just see the light and then go out and start, uh, you know, enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, I loved nature, but for so many years, because of the darkness, I didn't. I didn't go out in nature. I didn't appreciate nature at all. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like getting back to my roots because my mother was a very nature nature person too. Mm-hmm. So, to be able to come to a point where it was that easy, you know, hmm. and then make it happen, hmm. and then see also that. I wanted to help other people also heal their, I'd, I'd just say heal your darkness, you know, or mm-hmm. heal whatever. It, it's not like it, everything changes all at once, but you're, you you see uh, the light, you see the possibilities, you see it, and you, you want to reach right for it, and I did. That's what I did. Yeah. You know? And then passing the story on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. helping people. Through the, through the work that you're doing here yeah. and this, with this and everything. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I often see people that experience a lot of darkness. And mm-hmm. I try to be aware and be a good listener and, you know, uh, not trying to change them, you know, but somebody that can be there and, you know, be a support. Yeah. The, uh, one of the forms of uh, darkness that we encounter a lot in today's world is the uh, kind of form of uh, enormous busyness yeah. and enormous exhaustion, overcommittedness, yeah. um, and uh, sort of life without the life without a break, exactly, life without yeah. a moment to rest. Yeah. So we have actually, um, in addition to the residential community and the programming, we'll come back and talk about some of the programming a little bit later. But we also are involved with some groups to build networks. And in particular, ne- uh, building networks within groups of, uh, you could say, clergy or faith leadership. Yep. Uh, build networks within um, groups of nonprofit uh, leadership, or the sort of executive directors of nonprofits. And it's very interesting for me to notice that in both cases, um, these are two populations, these are two you know, groups of people that are um, they're providing leadership and they're needing to provide direction from you know for their organizations or for their congregations uh, or their practice groups, but they are um, very often exhausted and overcommitted. They often like are you know like so many people in in, in uh, this day and age are um, are having to go from you know, stressful commitment to commitment to commitment to commitment to commitment, and they have barely have enough time in their day to just sort of relax and let their minds settle. So that's um, part of uh, what what the center is up to, is bringing together those groups, helping them build connections with one another mm-hmm. to talk about, you know, some of the really important things that are going on right now, to talk about what's most meaningful to them and to stand back and to recognize Oh, that's right. We're in a period of historical crisis. Hmm. We, as faith leadership, have a really imp- or nonprofit leadership have a really important contribution to make in that regard. And how are how are our own lives set up so that we can actually get to that, as opposed to just being dragged around in a lot of different directions? So that's a that's another aspect of of uh, what uh, comes to mind to share with you. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I know it's been a um Mission of Mary, too. She, mm-hmm. Do you know that she officiated our wedding? No, what? I did not know yeah. that. When was that? 20-year anniversary. 
It was a month oh, ago. Officiated the 20 year anniversary of your yeah. wedding. Yeah. Okay, yes. yes yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was so much fun. That's great. Yeah. You, you know how Ted carries around his umbrella all the time, right? Yes. So she had him bring his umbrella. So at the very end of the ceremony, she, she says that, Ted, open your umbrella. And so he went to open his front umbrella. He couldn't open it. And he goes, I can't open it. I can't open it. I said, OK, I'll help you. And then we just walked out you know, that way. But it was, it was so good. And I mean, the way that she did it, the words that she said, mm-hmm. and you know, I wrote down my vows, and she, you know, she would say them, and then we wrote down Ted's, and she would, you know, repeat after me, and it was, it was just wonderful. It was just the most best experience that I've, I've had, and so I've always told her that uh, her mission and ministry was very important, and uh, very mm-hmm. spiritual to me. So, I wanted to thank her for that. Yeah. Yes, Aww, thank you, sweetie. It was such an honor to do that with you and to be a part of that. You and I have known each other a very long time. And so, and we've been good friends. And so yeah. it was something that I'll remember every moment of my life, really. It's yeah, in me, me. It's like in my cells. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Now, we want to talk a little bit about some upcoming events that you got going on. Mm hmm. Yeah, um, so one of the big cornerstones of uh, the center's year is a conference that we call Deep Change. Uh, And um, originally it was called Deep Change for Climate Justice. And then uh, the next year we just called Deep Change. And then this year it's Deep Change for Water Justice. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, so that's coming up on November 10th over at the Vermont Law School. That'll be an all-day affair. Uh, People can um, learn about it and register to attend at uh, at deep-change.org. And the basic kind of premise of that is this year we're focusing on uh, exploring the synthesis of personal and social transformation as embodied by three different social movements. So here we get a little bit edgy because we're going to be leaning into Occupy, Occupy Wall Street, you recall, yeah. Standing Rock, mm-hmm. where the water protectors were in, uh, in uh, North Dakota, and uh, um, Black Lives Matter. Three very, very important yes. uh, movements for our time mm-hmm. and uh, kind of exploring the message of each. And again, also the question as to how does the how does the uh, how have each of these movements made an important contribution to our overall understanding of the relationship between personal and inner transformation? Yeah. So we have a very, very interesting conference and we're going to we have uh, amazing leadership coming in uh, from uh, a woman named Sherry Mitchell. Mm-hmm. who is um, an indigenous woman from the Penobscot Nation coming to us from Maine. She's an indigenous rights attorney uh, and uh, um, a uh, activist and leader and uh, has just finished her first book entitled Sacred Instructions. Wow. It's an amazing and beautiful book. And she will be accompanied by uh, the Reverend Dr. Leon Dunkley, who is uh, just this past year arrived in, in uh, Woodstock to be the pastor of the Woodstock UU Church. Yeah. Um, and the two of them are going to work together to lead us through, lead us on a journey. That's uh, um, going to be a very, very interesting time. I recommend it to, I recommend it to both of you guys, yes. first and foremost. Uh, and um, well, she's not in Vermont. You know oh no, no, I didn't. I wasn't aware of where Mary is. Where Mary. is she? She's she's. she's I am somewhere in the world. Okay, yes. you're not somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, way, way, way. <laughs> she's she a long way away. <laughs> long way <laughs> away. Okay. I'm a long way away. <laughs> okay, well, very well. In that case, we'll bring it. We'll bring Facebook Live. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. I was going to ask. If, I was going to and and I was going to tell Linda we need to get some Facebook Live going on this, and I'll raise my hand to sponsor it on um, my feeds on Facebook so that everybody can see it. If you would like to share any of it, because this is this is such important information. Thank yeah, you for doing this. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, that's a very interesting idea to put or, forward. Facebook Live is actually a, a whole uh, yeah. way of communicating with the world that I haven't Absolutely. looked into so much myself yet, but I, I obviously do need to. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it's uh, really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Facebook Live would be something. And 
I just want to say, because Chico was just out here two seconds ago to go like this, which means that we're getting towards the end of the show. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Simon, I want to thank you very much, and I hope that you will come back and educate us some more or talk to us more about Anytime, what you're doing. as you know, really. Linda, okay. I'm here. I know uh, you're a busy man now. Not at all. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have to plan a couple weeks ahead of time. So yeah. this is in October, though, right? No, that's a, that's a November 10th Oh, event. November. Yep. Okay. Well, maybe we should do another show before then. Yeah, we can do that. Sure, we can actually maybe uh, bring Leon or someone in. That would be yeah, lovely would be to great. expand yeah. the conversation a bit. Yeah, what do you think about that, Mary? Absolutely. Let's yeah. book it. <laughs> yeah. Let's book it for sure. You can talk to them and see when they can. Usually we tape here on Mondays. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, Simon. You're really inspirational. You're, I mean, your center is just inspirational. And, and um, I think we can learn so much from uh, from you and from your, your center. And uh, uh, Mary... Uh, we need to get more of this stuff on, you know, I think, it, I think it's great. We could also probably do something with you through Zoom, right? You could. Okay, yep. so if we want to do extra shows, yep. we could do Happy that. Happy to work through Zoom. Yeah. And uh, also, you're invited anytime to come to the, uh, either with or without your camera, you can come to the center and walk through. There's still some, uh, uh, quite a bit to look at there on the land. Might be interesting. Yeah. Interesting for your viewers or otherwise. Yeah, that'd uh, be cool. If you work that way. I don't know if you do. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, ca I come uh, out. If I go out and get filmed, then I just come back and edit it mm -hmm. here. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I could totally do I'll that. Splice it all together. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Uh, okay. Anyway, no, thank you for thank you both for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to talk with you, and I can definitely feel from just being in this conversation with you, there's a really uh, heartfelt and important contribution that you both are making. So it's great to be here. That's what we're all about. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. right. So anyway, do you want to end the show, or would you like me to? Uh, I'll end the show. That yeah, because she's fun. all got a message. You got a message. I know you do. So, so Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Simon, thank you so much for taking your time to be here with us and to share your information. Um, so people can reach you. What is your website address? The website is transformationalpractice.org. That's where you can find our calendar of all the upcoming events. Uh, yeah, we actually, we didn't get into scratch the surface of things coming up. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's in the, between now and November 10th that's uh, worth taking a look at as well. Yeah. I think I should come down with a camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't you think I should go down there with a camera? <laughs> yeah, I think so I too. think you should. Yeah. I think you should. Yeah. And I want to thank everybody out there for watching this, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook or on CATV. And a big thank you to CATV for just giving us this opportunity to be able to do this. Without them, it would not be possible. And if you like these broadcasts and you like what you're hearing and seeing, go to lifeschool101.tv. That is our website. You can also find us on Facebook and on YouTube. And my outgoing message is this. We are the conscious creators of our own life and everything around us. And what we talked about today, awareness, it is probably the most fundamental piece of change. And so let's get down to some realness. Let's get down to some awareness and let's be the change we wish to see. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Linda. I love you. Love you too, Mary. Bye everybody. My little girl, well, she means everything to me. She can Lift me up, take me down She can see inside of me And I'm all rolled up inside her little arms tonight